Hi folks, I'm Mr. Schrago and welcome to Formative Assessment 2.3. So, in Formative Assessment 2.3, what we're doing is we're combining our earlier activities where we were doing some free body diagrams along with the ideas from F equals MA and the four equations, in particular the F net and the F equals MA portion of it. So, <clears throat> let's dive into it. In each of these situations below, we have an FBD. We're going to label forces, include the magnitude of each force, and determine the net force acting on each object. We might need to calculate other values at some point in this process. So, <clears throat> let's take a look at this first one. We have an 8 kilogram box. Ooh, I'm going to note my mass right there is being pushed with a constant velocity. Hmm, I feel like that might be important. So I'm gonna underline it. Across the floor by a horizontal force of 60 Newtons. Well, a push in general, when you're trying to make something happen, we're gonna call FA, our applied force. So right here, I know I've got a 60 Newton force trying to make things happen. And it's fine to just leave it as force push because we gave you some labels there. Now, you might be looking at this, you're like, all right, well, I've got a mass, and I know if I, if I know the mass of my object, I need to put that on my free body diagram. And you're like, all right, all right, well, I've got this blank here. What do I do with my blank right there? Well, what you're going to do with that blank right there is this is where our constant velocity note comes in. Here, I'll highlight, in a, highlight it in a different color a little bit. I just want to play with these markers. They're fun. All right, so that constant velocity tells us something. Earlier in the unit, we kind of talked about the fact that if F net equals zero, then we have balanced forces. If we have balanced forces, then we have constant motion. which is also acceleration is zero meters per second squared. If we had constant motion, F net was zero, so on. So what that tells us is that if we have constant motion, well, constant velocity is constant motion, that means F net has to be zero newtons, right? If we have constant velocity, constant motion, F net zero. We know we're pushing with 60 newtons of force, so we know F net, zero newtons. We know the force applied causing motion is 60 newtons. So if we have the equation F net is force applied minus the force resisting, your teacher might use slightly different terms with you for those. And we want to know what the resisting force is. Well, we know zero is equal to the 60 newton force we applied minus the whatever Newton force is resisting. Subtract 60 away from each side. Negative 60 equals negative force resisting, or the force resisting is 60 Newtons. Come over here, attach that to the resisting side of our diagram. Great, we're done, right? Oh, but... We now know how to calculate the weight of an object, or the force of gravity, Fg equals mg, or your mass times 9.8. I bet, I bet some of your physics teachers even were going in there and going, to calculate your weight, you multiply your mass by 9.8. So, bust out your calculator. We're going to go in there, and we're going to calculate the force of gravity on this object by multiplying our 8 kilogram mass by 9.8. And we get it's a 78.4 Newton force. Now, it's weird if that box was just to go through the floor, right? Things, when they're on flat surface, have a force that pairs the force of gravity. In this case, it's the normal force. Excuse me for going up above the text here. But this is our normal force. 
Now, since they're paired and we're not moving up or down, right, any time that we have forces that are equal, or an object that's not accelerating in that direction, in this case the box isn't moving up or down at all, that means the forces are balanced. And that is also a 78.4 Newton force. There we go. That's all we needed for this one. Uh, it might be a little more than you even need, actually, but this is what I at least am expecting from my, my classes, is that we have the force of gravity, the normal force, we have labeled the other forces, and we've shown a little bit of work on how we got there. All right, let's go to the next problem. Oh, hey, look at that! Our formatting is terrible. Guess what? You don't have to do problems two through six. We're skipping those today. So go ahead and scroll right past those, or in your book, just cross them out. We will be picking up on problem seven right here. All right. Problem seven. In problem seven, we have a 10 kilogram box. That's our mass. It's sliding to a stop. Oh. Now, hopefully by now many of us are picking up on this whole, if we come to a stop thing, that tells us V2 is zero meters per second. If there is 10 newtons of friction, all right, well that's FF acting on the box. What is the, the acceleration of the box as it slows down? And so <clears throat> now we have to look at this and see what do we need to know, right? Well, I know M. I know F. I know a force. It's the force of friction. That was 10 newtons. And I'm looking for A. Now, one thing I'll routinely see is see people be like, well, I knew V2, right? So I need it. Do you though, right? Our goal always is just to say, hey, all right, here's what we're looking for. We're looking for acceleration. Do I have an equation that will get me there? In this case, we do. <clears throat> we can use F equals MA. Plug in our 10 Newton force, <clears throat> our 10 kilogram mass, and leave A unknown because we're not sure yet. Divide each side by 10. We get A is equal to one meter per second squared. Not too bad. All right, let's take a look at the next one, problem number eight. <clears throat> okay, so we have Christine here, and Christine is talking about a baseball with a bat, and the, she was hitting balls earlier. So Christine has hit a baseball with this bat. She says, the bat applies more force on the ball than the ball applies on the bat, because the bat is bigger. Now, there's something wrong with this, right? And we're going to tell Christine what is wrong with her statement and help her correct it below. So, we have some options here. <clears throat> the force applied to the bat is equal to the force applied to the ball because all forces are equal and opposite. That's one statement that could be correct. Or, we could put the force that the ball applies to the bat <clears throat> is actually bigger because the ball must compensate for its small size. So, we've got two options there. And one kind of rule of thumb you can think about here is objects are inanimate. They don't think. They don't go, ooh, I'm a tiny little ball. I must make up for the fact that I'm a tiny little ball. No. Instead, they just follow simple rules of physics. And one of them is one of Newton's laws that says, for every force, there is an equal and op opposite reaction force. Whenever two objects collide, they both experience equal forces. However... One of those objects is probably going to experience a larger acceleration because it has a smaller mass. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> let's go on to number nine. And check that out, we're almost done. In number nine, we have soccer balls below. They have the same mass and they're being kicked with different amounts of force. We need to rank the soccer balls based on the force that the foot experiences that's kicking them. So we know how much force the soccer ball is experiencing. We want to know what is the order of like what foot experiences the most force between this range of forces. And the key to this again is simply remembering that for every action force there's an equal and opposite reaction force. When we have a foot 
a ball, that, uh, a football that experiences a 25 newton force. Well, guess what? The foot that kicked the football experiences a 25 newton force. That's our biggest force. So there we go. We'll look for our next biggest force because again, the force that the ball experiences is equal and opposite to the force the foot experiences. So that foot that experienced 16 newtons of force is going to be next. Followed by our 10 newton force right there <clears throat> at object C, at C, and then finally. A, with its measly 5 newton force, is last. So, if you want to look for your correct order, it's D, B, C, A. Alright, well, I hope you at least found this helpful, and we went through FA 2.3. Uh, if you tried some of those challenge problems, bravo. Make sure to check in with your teacher, let them know you tried the challenge problems that we told you to skip, because uh, they'll be at least be like, hey, good for you. Alright, have a great day.